So YCS Charlotte has just ended, but not without some controversy in the final round feature match between Adventure Prank Kids and Pure Eldritch. Let's dive in, shall we? Go ahead and Colossal Titan smash that like and subscribe button. We are so close to 700 subs. Thank you so much for all your support. We're currently sitting at 690. We're so close to 700, so close. So I wanted to talk about what happened at the YCS in the final round feature match. And essentially what happened was that there was some alleged cheating going on. Now, a lot of people are calling it cheating, right? And for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna say alleged cheating, but really, I don't know if it was really cheating. I think it was a misstep by the Konami judges. So essentially what happened, to just dive right into it, not waste your time, number one, uh, what do they call it? Destiny Hero Adventure Prank Kids. What a name. <laughs> Won the first YCS in two years, which is just absolutely insane. And a local player, you're seeing his picture right now. I also live in Jacksonville, Florida. I played against him a couple of times. His name is Jerome Adams, and he was playing Eldritch very skillfully, I might add. It was very interesting to watch a, God, almost 50-minute game one of him just meticulously, methodically picking apart this guy's prank kids board and doing very well at it. But where the issues come in is the fact that, specifically in game two, the opponent, Elijah, activated Fusion Destiny, bringing out Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer. However... DPE did not go to the grave at the end of the turn when it should have due to Fusion Destiny. That's number one. You're actually seeing a picture of that right now. And it's pissing a lot of people off. Because Jerome had Ice Dragon's prison set, and I believe at this point in the game, he also had Skill Drain set. Well, Elijah had Griffin Rider. Jerome could have activated Ice Dragon's prison on the DPE, bringing it to his board. Even if Elijah negated with the Griffin Rider, Jerome could have chained his skill drain and been able to negate the Griffin Rider and at least have the Phoenix Enforcer. Now you can make the argument, well, Elijah had five monsters on the board. It really wasn't going to matter. The effects of DP would have been negated by the Ice Dragon Prison anyway, plus skill drain is also on the board. Fair enough. At the same time, you got to keep in mind that Eldritch is very good at grinding out decks. And when something like that happens, that could totally warp the entire game just on that one thing. So I think that that's something really important to keep in mind about this. Uh, on top of that as well, there was uh, some issues with like attack declaration and knowing if there was an open response window so they had to pause the game a while for that while they worked this out. It was funny because like Elijah was clearly pissed because he's like, we just went over this. <laughs> um, you know, that that is what it is. I mean, from the outside looking in, I don't really know what to make of that. It was just, I think that whenever you get into those situations that there's a lot of pressure on both players because they want to win, they want to get that W, they want to do everything they can, especially too when there's only a few minutes left in the game to play, right? There was also some issues with Jerome and the judge where the judge was trying to say that Jerome was rule sharking because Jerome had, there can be only one face up on the field, and the judges weren't telling Elijah that he couldn't make certain plays, he couldn't do this, couldn't do that, and Jerome was having to tell Elijah, you can't do that. And you could hear the judge talking, saying, like, I understand your frustration, but you didn't give your opponent a chance to to respond and say, oh, I can't do that. And, like, it it was really weird. It, like, that's the only way I can make it, was that, like, you had to watch it. And, like, I, I really suggest that you go and watch that final match from start to finish, because it is a very good match to watch. Um, it's very long, but... Um, it's a very interesting match to watch um, because clearly Jerome's getting pissed that I'm sure he feels like he's having to do the judge's job for them. Um, so I, I don't know what to make of it. I, I, I really don't think it, a lot of this was cheating. I think that a lot of things were oversights, specifically with the Fusion Destiny and DPE issue, that the DPE didn't go to grave. The other thing that was a bit of an issue, which I've seen some players call cheating, was that Elijah... Did not, at least you didn't hear him, say, I'm going to activate DPE when it's in the grade to bring it on the next standby. Well, then when the next standby phase rolled around, he just picked up the DPE and dropped it. You have to declare that you're activating the effect when the Destroyer Feeding Enforcer pops. So maybe it was just something that we couldn't hear on camera. Maybe. I don't know. But 
from what I saw, he just picked up the DP and played. Again, I could be wrong. But these are just some things that I wanted to report about the final match that literally just finished like 10 minutes ago at YCF Charlotte. A lot of people in my local Jacksonville community are pissed because this is a local Jacksonville player that they wanted to see do well. Um, I personally wanted to see Prank Kids win because I feel like the more wins they get, the sooner that the deck will be hit and then we can deal with it less. Um, so no offense to you, Jerome, if you happen to see this video. I just want Prank Kids to get hit so that I don't have to deal with Prank Kids. Um, I've seen some people, too, uh, in the woodwork saying Jerome is a known cheater. Apparently, he's been banned from a couple locals and stuff. I don't know any of my local players that well anymore because a lot of the players I used to hang out with growing up playing this game don't even really play the game anymore or they've moved out of Jacksonville. So I really don't know anything about Jerome or any other Jacksonville players, even Jeremy Mitchell, who is also a local Jacksonville player that won a YCS. I don't know anything about these guys, so I can't say for certain whether they are or not. I'm, I'm, I'm judging, regardless of all that, I'm judging based on the fact of what I saw in this feature match and the baby back bullshit that occurred with apparently the judge trying to say that Jerome was rule sharking and then the DP didn't go to the grave. And it... In the finals of a YCS, especially in remote duels, when there's been a lot of baby back bullshit cheating in remote duels, which still grinds my gears to the bone, you would think that they would have at least 10 judges around that table watching the the plays that were being made like a hawk and still some things didn't get caught again I don't think it's really cheating I think that there were some oversights and I'm 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 a glass half full type of person I'm willing to give people the benefit of the doubt unless it's something blatant like you know you're activating a card when you clearly don't have the requirement to play it like people tried to cheat me back in the day with playing heavy storm when there was no background on either player's field and saying well the heavy storm pops itself what? Anyway, I just wanted to make this quick video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for all the support, and I will see you in the next video.